Yes, 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 yes. Back again, game six. Game six preview. I'm here with this great gentleman tonight. But first of all, I have to welcome everybody onto this show. It is what it is. I tell you, game six, West Manchester United in the league. I think we are number four. No. Hell no. Oh my goodness. All right, please smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're watching this for the first time. And also, share this video. Quick one. All right, we're in game six. So many games coming up this weekend. And uh, you can see the little love. The pictures. Newcastle, Man City, Arsenal versus Leicester City. Brentford versus West Ham. Chelsea welcoming Brighton. Everton versus Crystal Palace. Not in Forest. Forest, Forest. We'll be welcoming Fulham. Wolves versus Liverpool. And also on Sunday, East Switch. Um, East Switch versus Aston Villa. Manchester United, the big game of the weekend versus Sports. Which will be beating Sports silly. And um, one month also on Monday versus Southampton. All right, please sit back. I, I, let me welcome this great gentleman. I read he's ready for me. We got to do this. Jeffers is also ready. Jeffers is an Arsenal fan. He's going to tell me tonight they are going to win the league. All right, let me welcome Jeff, Jeffers first of all. And I want to ask him, Jeffers, are you winning this league? Are you winning this league? Jeffers, talk to me. You are welcome to the show. Uh, uh, it's great to be here. It's um, an interesting weekend after the yeah. whole drama we had from last week um we like to, i like to call it the preview the preseason before the champions league because we know that champions league match day two will actually kick off next week next um week yeah next week again we're starting over again so um first of all to win the league i still would not say yes yet because the thing is it's a marathon not a sprint <laughs> All right, it's about the I rate, I rate, let me tell you, I rate is a Liverpool fan. He's coming to tell me they are winning the league. Let me ask him. I rate. Are you... <laughs> uh, winning the league. Okay. Yes, tell me. No, you said to me the Europa League, Europa League set. <laughs> but um uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Um, yeah. Good evening, good afternoon to our viewers, to Jeffers. And I have to let Jeffers know that um, I'm finally happy that Arsenal fans are simmering down from the old referees against us, yes. FA is against us <laughs> rhetoric. Now, yeah. When getting... we talk about the dark horse thing here, to be honest with you, I think everyone does it in the Premier League. But I think why it's, get, why it's getting this much attention is because of the fact that the one team that is not known to actually play the dark cards is now playing it and everybody's eyes are focused on them, basically. But anyway, we always have to find a way to get results. If it's going to park the bus, so be it. No <laughs> <Hey. laughs> but then, um, let's, 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 we'll talk about the discipline as well. As now, yeah. two red cards already, um, that's not good enough for a team that wants to challenge at the top of the table. So, yeah, mm -hmm. let's get into the games. Interesting features coming up fixtures and also manchester united um i'm here to dissect the abysmal performances we have seen so far from man united at old trafford and a big game coming up on sunday uh, do, do we really need to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> i personally I feel i personally it. feel i don't do i feel we do, i feel we don't need to i think um it's just a case of we need to ask um Dr. Eric, as I like to call him, to prove us wrong <laughs> once again. Mm -hmm. Dr. Eric, okay. That's it. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get straight into this. Uh, speed up. Um, the first game for tomorrow, uh, Saturday, tomorrow, will be Newcastle versus uh, Mass City. I rate uh, Mass City will be facing Newcastle. Is it going to be a banana skin game? For you, it's, it's obviously a banana skin because we need to remember no, that dream. Newcastle, they are not in Europe, first of all. Secondly, they didn't participate in the midweek um, Carling Cup, Carabao yes. Cup games. Yeah, so yes. uh, they are fresh. They are, I, Eddie also said this morning that they used those uh, the time off to, you know, take, do some more training sessions and work on their patterns for this Man City game. So they are ready. They lost the last game against Fulham 3-1 and a lot of Newcastle fans have criticized their performances so far. 
Mm-hmm. What we're saying from Newcastle is not what we know them for. They are known for solidity at the back. But since the injuries started coming in, Trippier out of the team, um, Fabian Sia and uh, Botman have also had injury issues as well. Dan Bonard had to come in into centre-back. Then the likes of Joel Linton and Bruno Guimaraes have been badly out of form recently. Mm. So mm. that has not helped Newcastle as well. They've also have injury problems up front. We know very well Isak and um, Callum Wilson as well. So, And Eddie Howe said that Callum, uh, Isak might not be available. Most likely won't be available for tomorrow's game. So it's going to be wow. a big mess. It's wow. a big game for Newcastle, definitely. Like I said, they are not in Europe. Lots of expectations. The fans expect Newcastle to at least make a top six position this season and get into the Europa League uh, and places. So if they want to show that they are going to challenge for those positions, these are the kind of games that they need to come up with the goods. They need to put in the performances. And at St. James's Park, I'm very sure the crowd will be behind them and they would want to get a win in this game. For Man City, Rodri is out. What else can we say? We now be <laughs> how big a miss he is going to be. I'm also, saying. Kevin De Bruyne is also out. So, you have two major players. So, who is going to replace field. them? I mean, Gondogan, Bernardo Silva, field, field Foden, Kovacic. So, it's two two ah. huge misses in the middle of the park for them. But knowing Man City, you know, Pep will always try to find a way. When he didn't have a striker, he played the false nine and he won the league. Yeah, I, I know he would always want to find a way. But this... I, I, for some reason, I don't see Man City winning this. Wow. Looking at what happened against us now and the fact that they have two key players, De Bruyne and Rodri, that are injured, I think Newcastle will be up for this game. And at least, I'm, I'm seeing a draw in this game, if you ask me. I think wow. a draw for both teams. Yeah. All right. A draw for both teams. I'm going to switch to Jeffers. Uh, Jeffers Asna. Welcome to <coughs> the Is it three That's points the Kitty on this one, particular one? Um, um, I would first. I think I would just say um, one thing about fighting battles is, no matter even if you win, there always are going to be casualties, even on the winning side. And I think um, that game against City definitely had some casualties from the war that we had at the Etihad last week. Um, I think from the report, we are looking at late fitness tests for at least nothing less than five Arsenal players yeah. before the game. You're looking at um, a late fitness test for. For Ben White, we're looking at the late fitness test for although Bukayo Saka trained with the team today, so I think he's good to go. Um, we might be seeing another person in goal because it seems Raya is out. Yeah, Raya had a little knock, so he's gonna be missing from the Raya game. So we might be seeing Neto in goal. Yeah. What? We might be seeing Neto in goal. Yeah, it's just a light, slight knock, but they won't want to rush him in for the game. Um, maybe we might be boosted by the fact that um Mika Completed training with the first team, so he's most likely might be making his debut tomorrow. So, um, although I expect it's the, it's the Emirates, I expect I expect whatever side that Ateta will bring out, I expect them to actually go out to get the three points. And I think it's an advantage for them because right now City are not exactly in the right place they need to be. We know we've always said one thing about City, and that's the fact that um, City's strength is always in midfield and the presence of Eden Haaland up front. Now, the midfield already has two warriors out already. It's going to be very, very difficult because the players who will be coming in to replace those two players are not exactly like those two players. They have a different pattern which they already operate with. So it's going to be a bit more tighter for them. So I think um, this is an opportunity for us now to actually take the advantage to try and see how they can cover up and also proceed to actually get to the t- summit of the table if they really want to prove to be title contenders this season. So I expect... Um, I expect a tough game, but I expect them to come out with all three points. All right, three points there. I mean, I well, I'm the, switching over. I think play the young squad quickly in midweek, huh? so I think there's a yes. lot of confidence in the team right now that the young guns can come in and also do a good job. So I, I'm not exactly. playing at home. I don't see less than a three points in this game. Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh. I mean, we never know. It's the Premier League. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's the, that's why I said it's the Premier League. I'm not putting my neck out until I get the three points after 90 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Brentford. Irate. Talk to me about this game. Brentford, welcome in West Ham. West Ham, there's a problem in West Ham. Irate, blow feel now. Yeah, the old, I mean, the... Lopetegui, you need, you need to see his, 
The chicken has come home to roost. I, <laughs> I thought he said it. <laughs> his body language on the touchline in the midweek game against Liverpool. He is a broken man. He doesn't even know what. He doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to, where to turn to. And all he, he could do was, you know, berating the referees for decisions that went against them. At the end of that the is day, how you get stepped out of the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, the 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 league. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> At the end of the day, there's only one person responsible when the team is flailing and when the team is performing very well. And this is not even about them conceding goals. It's the overall pattern of play. The new signings that have been brought in are not playing well as well. So there are so many things going wrong at West Ham right now. It needs the result. It needs the results really bad. And this is not the kind of game that you can say, oh, as a West Ham supporter, I'm confident that we will get even a point. This is at Brentford Stadium. We also need points as well. And we know that they have these two guys. I think Wisa is injured, if I'm correct, but they have Mbuemo and they, have, they still have their first, uh, first midfield three that they play, who are also very compact in midfield. I'm at the GTEC Stadium. I don't think West Ham right now with, with, their, with, with, with their with playing, the there is no con- confidence in the squad. The team is no patterns of play. Attacking instinct is only Kudus right now that's trying to push something for that team. Just Kudus up front. The others are nowhere to be found. So a lot of questions are being asked of Lopetegui. And the earlier he starts to get results, the better for him. Otherwise, by the so, next international break, he might be joining Ten Hag. Um, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man, ten hag. Just fired, just fired, just fired. Yeah, my old and is out of the Premier League and look for other jobs elsewhere. Yay! Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jeffers, Chelsea has been fantastic this season, and um, we are switching over to uh, the game against Chelsea. Chelsea, we welcoming. Brighton. It's a big game. What do you think? Jeff? It's a tough one. It is a tough one. It's a tough one, exactly. Both and, of them um, are flying now. I mean, good games. I, the both of them are flying, but I think I'm one thing with Brighton is that Brighton will not want to have a repeat performance of what happened last season. Because I remember this game last season when everyone was thinking maybe Brighton will actually get a good result against Chelsea. Chelsea ran out five new winners in this game. Yeah, it is, the big yeah. for five last season. Um, let's see what has changed since last season and this season. Well, both sides have new managers now. Both sides um, have invested in the transfer window. Um, so I think basically both sides are actually looking at trying to get a result. Um, my my concern for Brighton is this. Um, I feel personally like they still mm. are finding it difficult to kill games. That's a concern for Brighton for me. They're finding it difficult to kill games. Um, Kairo Mitoma is still trying to get back to his deadly form. You know what he can do when he's actually fully on pace. You know, basically, he's one player you just cannot pack because Stop he knows how to he knows how to get past you. Um, we're seeing a new lease of life with um Danny Welbeck up front. We're seeing a player who seems to have reinvented himself, and you also have Jao Pedro as well to also try to get into the game as well. Too. For Chelsea, my major concern with Chelsea still remains the defence line. Um, that defence line, to me, still hasn't <laughs> been convincing enough. I think if you take out, if you just take out Kukurea from the from the defence line, every other person is actually suspect. And I feel this is a game whereby Brighton will want to use every creativity they can in the book to actually try and get through that defence line. And if they actually breach that defence line, they will score. Um, you're having players coming back to Facing their former clubs, they're having players like um, uh, Moses Saisi, they're actually facing Brighton. They're also having Robert Sanchez also facing Brighton because uh, these two guys actually came from Brighton. Even Marco Correa also came from Brighton as well. <laughs> so it's yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. interesting. It's more or less like an old old boys association. <laughs> they're having a regular meeting. But um, apart from that, um, Nicholas Jackson is in form. Uh, I think um, the, the, the cup game actually proved that, yes, um, maybe they are getting it right in attack. Um, Kopama always has always delivered when you need him to deliver, and I think this will not be any different. So, I guess we'll take three points for Chelsea for this one. All right, I really think, I actually think right it's there. a banana, banana yeah. skin for Chelsea. Brighton, Chelsea. yeah, they, they love to express themselves. Brighton don't play according to the opposition, 
they the, have a file of play. They play their they own file, whether they are home <laughs> or they are They frustrate you. They are very good at doing that. So, you know, Chelsea needs to be careful. I think, like Jeff has said, attack, they are doing a lot right. But defensively, they need to be better because Welbeck is in good form. Del Pedro, yeah. too, is in form. And uh, even though Mitoma and um, the other wing, I forgot, Minte are not coming up with the goals. They still have two guys up front that can hurt the opposition. So Chelsea needs to be very careful, even though they are playing at home. Brighton will want to come and impose themselves at Stamford Bridge. So it's an interesting game. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting yeah. game. Hold on, Irate. Uh, you're going to talk about this Everton versus uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, what do you think about this game, Irate? I heard Oliver Glasner saying, oh, people were having a lot of expectations because of the seven-game winning run they mm-hmm. went and that. That, was, that wasn't real. You know, that was, that was just some sort of fantasy for the fans. But the truth is, they lost Michael Olise and they've not been able to replace him. I think Iketia is a decent player, but he's not a supporting it's striker. Not. And he doesn't come up with a lot of goals. So... He is not an adequate replacement for Olise. Eze has been the one trying to pull the strings by himself. And so many times he gets crowded out. We saw it in the, their last game against Man United. So um, they need more up front. Maybe he needs to bring in someone else for Inketia. I don't think he would be benching Mateta because we know he can come up with goals at any time. Adam Watson, he needs to get the balance right between Watson, Hughes and... Um, um, the likes of Jefferson Lemar as well. So they also lost Joachim Anderson. I think those two players they lost have actually hurt that team a lot because the way they played towards the end of last season, they they understood each other. Anderson was marshalling the back line very well. Perfectly. Very well. He had Klein and Gay next to him. So Gay has to step into those shoes now. We know he's a young defender, but he has to come up with, you know, take, ensuring that the back line is compact, leading the five players at the back. Um... I think Crystal Palace are struggling, or Everton are struggling more. They are actually worse than Crystal Palace right now. They are conceding goals right, left, and center. Left they can't, and they they can't, can't even hold stop. on to leads. <laughs> you know, it's Sean Dyche is under a lot of pressure. But I mean, it's a good scene pack they are playing at home. We expect the fans to be behind them. So uh, it's going to be a very, very, you know, uh, uh, interesting atmosphere. I, yeah. I think. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to go for an Everton win, Everton but knowing win knowing they have Michael Kane at the back and um, this other Tarkovsky, those two guys have not been up to up to standard this season at all. So I think Crystal Palace will also get something. I'll go for a two-two draw. A two-two draw. Uh, Jeffers, I'm going to switch over to you on this particular game. Uh, Forest. Well, I Forest versus uh, Fulham. Versus Fulham. Okay. Um, this one, I think this one is what we can perfectly call the perfect banana skin because um, these are two sides that we can expect to see both versions of these two sides. If they come out to play, they come out to play. If they decide to go below below expectation, they do it perfectly well. And the question now is what what do you expect to see from both sides? Um, for for Nottingham Forest, I think um. Uh, so far, so good. They've been actually pulling up roots, like the forest they are. They've actually been pulling up roots. Like I think the highlight for them this season was actually that victory that they got at Anfield against Liverpool. Um, there have been some games whereby they've looked as if they were going to get defeated, but they've been able to knock it out by getting goals right at the end. And I think um, currently Chris Wood is actually on a rich vein of form. It's very, very unusual for you to see Woods actually scoring, but Wood has been scoring, and I think it's all, all the reasons why I think um, Awoni, even though he's already fit, he's still on the bench, basically. He has not been able to actually force his way back in. Um, for Fulham, <clears throat> what can we say? Fulham, Fulham seems to be, they seem to be actually getting the right note. Yes, because the thing is, right now, is you don't exactly have one person who you might say, is actually the pinpoint man or the star man to watch out for right now. As I see, they're sharing it among themselves. You have um, Emil Smith Road there, you have Ace Nelson, who in every game he has started so far has actually scored. So, you also have uh, Jimenez up front as well, too. And you have um, you have um, Adam Achawi mm-hmm. also pulling, pulling, and you also have Iwobi also creating. So, I think um, this is a game that I expect to see both sides creating chances. 
I expect to see both sides try to prove their metal in the game. However, if there's one thing I do not always want to put my neck out for is goals because this is the mm -hmm. kind of game that we actually provide so much for you, but we yeah, still end up goalless. So on this one, I'm going to just go safe and call this game a straight draw right down the middle. All right, straight draw right there. Uh, yeah, this will be the, another uh, game Liverpool is going to lose. Uh, let's ask Irate. Irate, uh, I'm sorry about that. We are going to Wolves. <laughs> so, so Wolves will actually be had for dinner, honestly. <laughs> no, what's, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh what do you think about this game? Yes, after we, were, after we were swallowed up in the forest, now we are going to wolves. Wolves. And <laughs> we, we, the thing is, right now, this mm. set of wolves or this pack of wolves, they are a wounded one because <gasps> they've lost their last two two or two. three games, I think, including the Carling yeah. Cup as well. Yeah. So, um, um, it's and I usually say it's not a good time to play a team that has lost some games in a row, except maybe Man United. At home in the next game. <laughs> at home in the next game because Never they will be, they they'll be out. They'll be out for blood. So yeah. I think Wolves. Um, this season Gary O'Neill has not been able to wave his magic wand like he did last season on Wolves. They've not been, especially up front. They've had this new striker Larsen who has come in. He has not really. He has not delivered in terms of goals, but he has put a good shift. He puts himself around a lot. He causes a lot of problems for the opposition, and his old up play is very good. But I think somewhere between midfield and defence, they are missing something. Because there always seems to be a huge gap between the midfield and the defence. That's what I've noticed. And if you want to play a high line, and you are not compact, you are several yards away from each other, it's a problem. Especially when you have someone like Craig Dawson, who is 33 or 34 year old, and you want him to be running, um, or you know, around the back line. I don't think that is ideal for someone um, of that age. So um, Gary O'Neill needs to get something right. He has spent some money, even though not an outrageous amount of money compared to some other teams, but he did bring in some new players. So I think he's still trying to figure out what his best option is up front. The midfield is brought in the Brazilian Andre to join Andre Gomez and Lemina. And what I've noticed is he's trying to push Lemina as an attacking midfielder to play in the number 10 position. But that is not Lemina's position. The Lemina we know has been a defensive midfielder or a central midfielder at best. So that position doesn't suit him. He's trying to accommodate all three. And there is no balance in the midfield, which is actually um out or imbalancing the team as a whole so he needs to get that midfield right he's also lost the colombian center back mosquera to a long-term injury he will be out till the end of the season so we expect potty to come in for him um i think like i said with the crowd behind them this is the premier league if when teams are playing at home it just feels like they have this new set of muscles and they are just ready to have a go at whoever is coming to their home ground so i think wolves want to do the same but for Liverpool, I would say, yes, we're on a good run, except the loss to Nottingham Forest. That has been our only loss this season. And with the Cup game on Wednesday, we, Ross was able to give some game time to the likes of Gapo and um, Jota as well. We didn't play the last game. What about Nunes? Also, Nunes, Nunes played. Yeah, Nunes played. Nunes played the game. He also gave some rest to Salah as well. And most importantly, the likes of Konate, Van Dijk, Trent... Um, Sobo Sly, Gravenbeck, who has been very fantastic this season, they were all able to sit out that game, which means they are fresh for this game against Wolves. So if we go by momentum, I have to say, in my head or in my heart, I expect mm. Liverpool to get all three points in this game, looking all at how far we have played this season. But it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a... I'm a Historically, against Wolves, it's always been a scrappy win for Liverpool. Scrappy like a 2-1, 1-0, oh, yeah. 2-0, or a draw or something. So, I think it wouldn't be it wouldn't be different. I, maybe like a 2-1 win for Liverpool. That's what my heart says. Mm. That's a good heart. That's a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on Sunday, we are switching over to Jeffers now. It's straight. You are coming Aston Villa. Ah, oh, Jeffers. this is a game. This is a game I want to see. 
It's a game I want to see I because of the fact that I, want to watch this game too. I actually want to watch this match because the thing is this: uh, we know what Aston Villa can do. We know, obviously, when I may have. I lost him there. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, I can. All right. Okay, we're good. All right, but this is a game whereby my focus is not on Aston Villa. My focus is on Ipswich. Because I have seen Ipswich perform this season. And honestly, Ipswich is making me want to reconsider my predictions actually at the start of the season. Because of all the newly promoted sides, they look very, very much like the one side that will actually make it true and stay in the Premier League. Because unlike others, they haven't really spent much. They've kept the forecome of the team that actually got them into the Premier League from the Championship. And they've been able to actually secure players who will be able to get them to get the job done, like the likes of uh, Ridella and also having players like um, mm, um I think they've got some other players. I don't I can't remember. Maybe I think I don't know if they got Bro, Bro, Mamando Broher, but I guess maybe that deal fell off at the last minute. But they've been able to get players who will get the job done for them. And if you notice their last two games, they actually have been able to pick up points, even when it looked as if they're not gonna get it. Like the game against um, Southampton had to. They have to come back right at the dead to actually get to join against Southampton. These are the games that um Ipswich will be looking out for. I think um Portman Road will be looking at a home game where the yeah. fans can actually be vociferous, and I think um, it might actually play to their advantage. Um, I guess maybe Villa might want to try and invest some players because of the Champions League they have in midweek. But um, if there's one player we should be looking out for, it will be Watkins. It will be John Duran because D Duran, yeah, yes, John Duran. Duran. Yes, because John Duran has proven to be the perfect sub this season. In every game, he has come on the bench to actually get into the game. He has scored so far in the Premier League. And I think Except that's... Him. The only one he hasn't scored was um, the Arsenal game. Yes. Uh, yeah, they found a way to handle him there. So, basically, <laughs> I think this is going to be a very tough one. Um, it's a Sunday game. I just want to just sit, relax, and enjoy football. I, want um, to I expect... Personally, I actually think both teams would actually score themselves because um, I think Martinez, that clean sheet, that clean sheet demon he actually possesses when he actually plays for the national team, is not replicating itself for club form. At it's all. not working because he's been conceding goals basically. So I guess maybe this one, I'm actually looking at both teams scoring in this one, but I want to actually enjoy a very fun game. I'm not going to put my neck out on this one. I I'm just to want to watch that. and observe how it goes. Exactly. But I expect a good game of football. I want to say something on this game. Yeah, I actually like the way Ipswich have adapted their game. I remember yeah. when the first game of the season, they were all over the place trying to press Liverpool and, you know, they were going with the euphoria of welcoming, being back to the Premier League and all that. But now they are more compact. And the last game, they got a, a last-minute equaliser from the captain, you know, which gave them an additional point. So, like I said earlier, if you're a newly promoted team, you don't have the quality of most of the teams that are established in the Premier League. What you can do is scrap for points here and there. Make sure you are not too far away from the rest. Because if you are closer to the bottom, the relegation scrap at the end of the season, you might not escape it. You might go back down. So if Switch are doing that now very well, McKenna is doing a good job to make sure that the group is at least getting something from games. But I think overall, the quality of Aston Villa will just be too much for this team. I mean, I'm talking about the likes of Leon Bailey, Morgan yeah. Rodgers, Oli Watkins. There are plenty. Um, the, Tillemans. Their last game, Tillemans was outstanding. Uh, Amandu or Nana in midfield. So, um, it's going to be a tough game with if she's playing at home. I think Aston Villa might win this one. If you ask yes. Me. All right. All right. Moving on to this. Hold on with me. I rate on this game. Onmouth uh, versus Southampton. I yeah. read. Very interesting game. Um, Southampton, they've been all over their manager asking mm -hmm. questions. They are losing games, drawing games. They have not gotten a single win this season. And Bournemouth, they are a team that they have a style of play that they want to express themselves. This eye-line attacking style of football. And I just feel like it probably will be too much for Southampton. Southampton are not lacking in effort. They are lacking in quality. Yeah. Because, you know, they try to play the way you expect a team, a proper team to play, but they create these chances they don't put it in the back of the net. 
Um, Cameron Archer is, is a corporate. Um, ben Barrett and Diaz is another corporate. These two guys are getting loads of chances and they are not bearing them, which is a big problem for any team that wants to survive in the Premier League. And I think it's going to be the case again on Sunday. For Bournemouth, they need to get their number nine to start scoring goals, actually. That is what they brought him in for. But they do have um, a big threat in Semenyo and Justin Kluivert up front. Those guys are very tricky against any opposition. You have to look out for them all the time. Mm-hmm. And they also have um, some very solid midfielders as well. Bournemouth, who are and the Kekes, for example. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. Left yeah. back is a very, very dangerous player. Overlapping fullback. Yeah. Very good going exactly. up front. So, um, I think Southampton are going to be beaten again, if you ask me. Like I said, they need to reinforce. They can't wait for January to come to get some experience head into this team. And the coach, he needs to change the style of play. If he doesn't, by December, we might be we might be singing a new song about Southampton. And another funny thing is this game is a derby. It's a derby game. Yeah. It's the, is it it's South, worse. It's a derby. It's the South Coast derby. derby. Yeah. yeah, South Coast derby. So <clears> yeah, most of them South Coast. You don't want to be on the losing end for this one, but I think Bournemouth will win. <coughs> oh, you want, yeah, Jeffers, you want to say um, something? I want to give. Um, I want to give. Um, I want to give um, Russell Martin a bit of advice here. Um, the key thing to games like this is find a way to secure your midfield, and I think he has the solution. The question is, will he be ready to use it? There is a certain Adam Lalana in that Southampton side. He is a captain, a former captain. He's a leader. He understands the Premier League very well. I think this is the one game I guess Lalana has to actually come in. Because the truth is this. I've seen Southampton over, at least I've seen their last three games, and I can tell you one thing that seems to be missing. It seems as if there is no one to actually lead that team from the midfield. It's glaring. Because it's not as if there's a lack of chances. Kamanacha has been getting a lot of chances. Burton Diaz is a striker that if he's given a chance, he will actually deliver goals. He has actually done that several times. I think, and you have the young the young man, Diblin, as well, too. Dibling. He's also given what he's doing at the side. My concern now is they need someone to be able to marshal that squad. And I guess this is where Lalana will have to come in. Um, I, I, I think Bournemouth, Bournemouth, um, Bournemouth have given as good as they've gotten so far. I think the only thing that's missing for them now is goals. And mm. I don't want this game to be a game whereby they will finally get the scoring boots on points and start. Because the truth is, if they actually get their scoring boots on against Southampton, if Kerr is not taking it, it might be, but it's be another four, another five for Southampton. And if that happens, I don't know, honestly. I think we might just be saying maybe they should start planning for a patient championship, even though it's just October. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Rate, I'm going to start with you on this one. Manchester United, the big club right there in EPL. Uh, we'll be fighting the, against the, 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 uh, the big club, club the big club, club that is actually yeah. that is actually flapping to the, the speed. <laughs> I, mean, okay. I want to start with you. No What's your preview on this game? Uh, Man U versus Sports. I mean, these are two teams that they've not gotten their beer in this season, so <laughs> it's a level ground. Man United for me, you don't. There's no home for Man United. There's no home, no away. They just play, however they play. Either they are home or they are away. And oh, Pirates, what's the problem? What's Man U's problem? Okay, you know, so they, because somebody said about uh, individual player like Bruno. I mean, I think it doesn't suit the system. I wouldn't uh, say so. Bruno delivered. No, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Him. So, all of I don't a sudden, think so. why wouldn't he suit the system? He's one of the best players at Man United, and that's the truth. Bruno, he, I'm not a big fan of him as a person because he complains too much, but he's a very good player. <laughs> that is the truth. He's a very good player. See, Ten Hag, mm. he, I think one thing I would say about him is probably he needs to learn his commanding of the English language better because every time he opens his mouth in press mm. conferences, it mm. just seems to be giving gifts to reporters and journalists for something to talk about. After the 20 game, he came out and said, oh, 20, they wanted it more than us. You know, they put in more effort. Why would 20 be coming to Old Trafford? 20 is a team in maybe fifth or sixth place in the Netherlands. 
come to Old Trafford and play you in your own park. And you have a player running from right back in between three, four, five people up until when they scored the goal. So That's you as a manager, if you are saying your players are lacking efforts, who is responsible for motivating the players? They are not just the coach. They are supposed to lead the team. They are supposed to motivate the team. And mm. he himself, he doesn't seem like he can motivate himself at the moment, talkless of motivating the team. Sorry. So if you are saying where is Man United's problem, and this is a problem that me, I'm happy that it's happening. As a Liverpool fan, like I said, we want the ah. to stay. But I'm absolutely appalled that Man United's new ownership made mm. their first decision a very big decision. And for me, it is a wrong one by keeping Ten Hag. Wow. Irrespective of his FA Cup win, this man should have been let go. Because what? This is not even about the result. It's about the play itself. The number of shots Man United face every game from last season. The number of goals Man United has scored from last season. I think in the top 10, Man United scored the least goals last season among the top 10 teams. Hmm. That is actually abysmal. That is not the Man United that we know. You have a Marcos Rashford that has been out of form. It seems like he has fallen in love out of the game. He lacks motivation. He seems like he's not. He's probably not even training well. Every time he's down in tools. The only person in attack I can say, okay, can come up with something. It's Ganacho. A 19-year-old Ganacho is how low Man United have come to relying on a 19-year-old to deliver. Zegzi seems to be all over the place. He's still finding his feet. And I he told you. He told you anyway. He told you he's not a nine. He's a nine and a half. So you might just want to manage him that way. <laughs> See, so the question is: You have Rasmus Oiland. You bought him as a twenty-one year old, and it starts. It starts in previous teams. He's not even prolific. I think he scored twenty goals or something in Atalanta. And you brought in a twenty-one year old to lead the line at Man United. That was two seasons ago. Now last season, you are short of goals. That's why having Rasmus Oiland. You wanted to get a striker in, and you went for a profile of the same you bought from two seasons ago. Another 19 year old who scored 14 mm. goals or thereabouts in Bologna. So I think my United ownership needs to take some portion of the blame here. Actually, a large portion of it. There are many quality strikers. Ivan Tony was there, or Simon was there. Isaac, that my United could have gone for that are in their prime, that they can come in and start scoring the goals. No, they went for Zegzi. And now the man is all over the place. It's a nine and a half. So, so many wrong decisions have been made and questions are now being asked. Is Ten Hag the man to take Man United forward? All of the money he has spent, he has brought in half of the Ajax Academy to Man United. Absolutely. And it's still not working. So, for me, if you look at how Man United play, this is not even about whether effort or desire. It's just overall. I, I, it will be interesting to see like the pre-game talks, team talks and all that, you know, do they actually put out a formation board and direct the players and tell the yeah. players, this is this is what you should do. This is what is expected. These are the styles of play. This is how we want to progress from one half of the field to the other half. It's, act- it's absolutely shocking that Man United, right now, the confidence is so low and whether we more away, mm. it's, it's just an abysmal performance from match to match and... I still don't see a difference coming in this Sunday. Spurs, on the other hand, are also sports. not. Very yeah, I want to talk about sports. But the one thing about sports is because they are, you, people are saying talking about the high line, high line. You know, if you look, if you look at sports this season, even though the results have not shown, they've been better than Man United, and this is why they are underperforming their xg. They are not scoring enough goals for the chances that they are creating. They are creating loads of chances, but they are not putting those chances in the back of the net. It's not the same for Man United. Man United are even struggling to create. To create. That is the difference. So uh, if Spurs are on their A game, in with for me, the key man in tomorrow's game is Madison. If Madison is on his A game, we know what he can do as a 10 and he is ready to go. He's ready to run that game on Sunday. I think Spurs will actually win this game. For me, hmm. it hmm. tilts towards a sports win more than a Man United win. But worst case scenario, I'm seeing a draw. But let's Again. keep our eyes on it. Ten Hag <laughs> might be gone by the next international break if results don't improve. Jeffers, don't go yet. You have to say something about this game. 
please, 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 please. Let me okay. let me quickly let me quickly drop my two cents. Um, mm, this is my this is my my concern. United. Uh, why I feel sad. I feel sad for United because we. I why I'm actually picking our United is this. Mm-hmm. United and Arsenal were in a period by the boat were rotten. They were actually in a vote of form. They were sliding down. They actually lost their place as the prestigious English sides. And the thing is this. It happened at the same time Arsenal was actually on the green storm. But the thing is now this. Arsenal decided to go back to the basics, looked at where the problem was, and bought in someone who was able to actually bring his vision and bring it to align with that of what the club wanted. And we are seeing the giant strides they are getting. Even though obviously people might say they haven't gotten a title yet to actually show for the effort, but actually, they're actually making a whole lot of progress. United, on the other hand, a lot of people might want to say Ten Hag, um, you should cut him some stack at least. He's won two trophies in his two seasons so far at the club. But the truth is this. <clears throat> what those trophies have actually done is those trophies have actually sandpapered the rot that we can actually see at Old Trafford. All is not well. It's just these trophies have just been able to like gloss over the fact that United have been abysmal in games. And the sad part is this. Okay, let's take for example, look at the, the, the game against 20. Why I expected that game to be an easy one for United was because of the fact that. It so happens to be that Everton Hag managed 20 before he went to Ajax. So you should know the pattern of this side, but look at it. They were basically taking United to the cleaners. It was like, I thought you managed this side. You should know their strengths. You should know their weaknesses and use it to your advantage. Instead, you make it look as if you're just facing them for the first time. Especially in the second half. The second half was... Nothing to Nothing. write home about. It wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. This game, you're playing against a sports side who, funny enough, played also yesterday. And we saw what Spurs did. Spurs got a red card as early as the 11th minute. They were already down to and 10 minutes. Well. Yeah. And they still won. So it tells you that you're having a case of two managers with different patterns and different perspectives to games, and you begin to wonder if United come up with that performance in the second half against Spurs. Ah. Spurs will smoke them out. Uh, it's not going to be good. I and this is one game that, you know, honestly, so this is one game that United should not even afford to lose because the last time they played this fixture last season, United got beaten again by Spurs. Yeah. It's not looking good. Okay. I personally feel like the board got it wrong already. Him winning the FA Cup was to have been the perfect sending of gifts. Okay, at least I've done something bad. I've been terrible at this job, but at least let me give you guys this one I've actually gotten. And you walk away. But instead, they gave him a new contract. The storyline was, he's a changed man. He's bringing a new face. He's bringing his pattern back. He's getting his players back. I you are so far, we are seeing it is just same of the same. Same, same, same High same. today, terrible tomorrow, a Jekyll and high performance in every match day, and we just begin to wonder, when will it finally done to the board so, that Eric Ten Hag is not actually going to get this job done? So, anyway, so Jeff, I expect them to I actually give their, their best. They brought Van Staroy for this reason, right, as his assistant. So... Yeah. How come Understood. Van Roy has not been able to change things? Especially That's actually baffling. It's, it's, actually, it's actually baffling to me because I actually saw Van Nistelrooy's PSV last season. I played against Van Nistelrooy's PSV and I could see a manager who actually had a game plan. I mean, no one actually expected them. When, when I actually expected them to actually go to Sevilla, everybody knows that the sanchez Pijon is actually one place you don't ah, actually get results okay. against Sevilla. But they went there they went there and they actually got all three points against Sevilla last season. It shows you at least he has the potential to maybe take... I think personally, I think um, this experiment, we are getting closer to the final stages of it, personally. Because the truth is this. If I tell you how doesn't win on Sunday, Sunday uh, um, the volume is going to be high. And whenever the volume is going to be high, the truth is this. 
every club owner considers two things when it comes to handling the club side. One, you consider the pedigree of the club you own. And two, you consider the fan base. The, the fan, fan base are saying they don't want this guy. Is going. He is gone. He is gone. I just hope United finally find a way to do it because if they do not, and they let Tottenham win on Sunday. I read, I read anyway, our prediction, our prediction will actually come to pass. We said this was going to be gone before the end of October. We are about you to enter October. You predicted draw in this game. You know, I don't. I don't even hope my United get anything in this game. I want ah! the sports to actually win. I want us to turn up the volume, like Jeff had said against Ten Hag. You see, the funny thing is, yeah. after this game, my United go to Porto in the Europa League, and we all know what Ooh. that means. Going to yeah, started in the girl. You yes, don't. You know. don't want to go there. You don't want to so, go there. Simulation. My next weekend, ah. Ten Hag might be gone. If he doesn't win this first game, he loses the Porto game and he doesn't get a result next weekend, they might be And I heard that is why they actually brought in Van Nistelrooy. Van Nistelrooy. When they Immediate to takeover. Ten Hag is going to take over. Immediately. So it takes over. This, I, I'm, I'm feeling like this is the beginning of the end of Ten Hag's era at Man United. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, this is how far we can go tonight. I want to say thank you, guys. Uh, Jeff has one love bro as now is winning tomorrow i hope so i hope so, so too i just um, hope, I as hope for so. the for the newcastle game i think um, this this is a game we actually have to watch out for because watch out, yeah it's an early game. it's an early kickoff, kickoff. Yeah. and the thing is newcastle have been abysmal but right now if there is any time for newcastle to get the results against manchester city now this is the perfect time all right. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Jeffers, one love, bro. I always appreciate it. Good. All right. Irek, thank you so much. We'll see thank you on you Monday for the, uh, for the review. For the review. I hope, By God's I hope, grace. I, I hope Liverpool I'll, I'll, made, uh, I'll, I'll be there to review my United's loss. <laughs> all right. One love. One love. All right. All right. All right, viewers. This is how far we can go tonight. I really enjoy myself. Please smash the like on the video, subscribe to the channel until we we'll come back for the review of this game on Monday. God willing. Bye for now.